All right. So the last topic for the week is on the octet rule, but it's really on breaking the octet rule. Okay, so let's try this. Breaking the octet rule. All right, that's our topic. Breaking the octet rule, right? Because we're rebels today, breaking the octet rule. So the real question is, why would anybody really follow the octet rule, you know? I say, let's stick it to the man. Let's break the octet rule. And let's take a look at why we would follow the octet rule. Okay. So it turns out most of the uh, atoms that we use in, in molecules are in the second energy level, right? We have the 2s and we have the 2p. That contains carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, right? Carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen are in every protein, right? Uh, which creates all of the cells and muscles, uh, right, you know, and uh, fibers in your body, basically, right? So all living systems are primarily composed of carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen, which means that there are a lot of compounds that are composed of elements in this row, okay, or in this energy level. But there are a lot of elements in the rest of the table, and you'll see why this matters as well. In the second energy level, we have only a p possibility for eight valence electrons, right? Here's our second energy level. And once we fill up the second energy level, any electrons on top of that would have to go into a new energy level, and they would be repelled by the electrons in that filled energy level, right? So, the t right, these guys are, right, have a maximum of eight electrons, right? Now, we didn't say they have a minimum of eight electrons, but they do have a maximum of eight electrons in the second energy level, okay? okay. Well, let's take a look at the third energy level. And the third energy level, you're saying, oh, okay, well, to, to, I'll just do the same thing. I'll just draw. Here's my third energy level, right? Look at that. It looks like eight electrons. You're being ridiculous, Mr. Safford, telling us about it violating the octet rule. Look, there are only eight electrons. But what you forget is that these guys here are also in the third energy level. Now, they're higher energy, right? They tend not to get filled until after we start the fourth energy level, but these are technically in the third energy level. So the third energy level is bigger than the second energy level. We have the two, uh, 3s, we have the 3p, and we have the 3d. And so what happens is these guys can but don't always, but don't have to, right, uh, have up to 12 electrons, right? They can have up to 12 electrons, they, right? They can violate the octet rule. Now, most of the time, they follow the octet rule because these guys are significantly higher in energy. But there are a lot of times when they're fo uh, forming of molecules that have more than four bonds, where they will violate it. They'll use uh, their the d orbitals right to um, to place more electrons uh, in, in, around the the central atom, and so we can expand our octets, right? And if it works for the third energy level, it also works for the fourth, fifth, and sixth, and seventh energy levels as well. Okay. So what you're going to see is that we're our Octet followers are actually relatively few. In fact, the only guys who have to follow the octet rule are carbon, nitrogen, right, oxygen, and fluorine. I guess neon too, because but neon is always following the octet rule. It doesn't form any bonds, right? So these are octet followers, right? Wake up, sheeple! You don't just have to follow the octet rule. Well, you kind of do, actually. Okay, but below it, right, we can have up to 12 electrons around the central atom. All right, up to 12. And you're going to see this with things like sulfur with six bonds. All right, that's 12 electrons around the central atom. Or you might see it with something like uh, iodine 
with uh, five bonds, right, around the central atom, right, and one unshared pair, right? Uh, great, because that's one, two, three, four, five, six groups of electrons around it, right? Or you might see it with something like bromine with three bonds, right, but two unshared pairs, right? And again, one, two, three, four, five. So this would be 10 electrons around the central atom, but these guys would be 12 electrons, right? So you're going to see different combinations that add up to more than eight electrons around the central atom with elements below uh, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. But here's the other kicker. It turns out that elements to the left can have fewer Right. than eight electrons, right? And so you'll see things like beryllium with just two bonds and no unshared pairs, right? Or aluminum with three bonds, right? And no unshared pairs, right? And so we'll have things like this where you have only four electrons around it or six. And that's a possibility. Boron also forms uh, fewer than... I think boron, like aluminum, would be electron deficient with just six electrons around it, okay? So uh, you have this kind of thing, that in other words, everybody to the left of carbon can be electron deficient. In fact, that's the term for it, electron deficient, which sounds like something that somebody who's being very harsh would evaluate. You are electron deficient, sir. Right, um, But these guys are said to form expanded octets, which is a polite way of saying uh, that you have too many electrons. Right? Expanded octets, which means more than eight. I, I, it's not really an octet if it's an expanded octet, but that's what they say, expanded octets. Uh, I always feel like that's my excuse after Christmas. I'm like, yeah, well, you know, pants don't really fit because over Christmas I kind of expanded the octets, if you know what I mean. Um, but, um, yeah, either way. But the point is that fewer than eight, more than eight, okay? So let's see how this might actually work. Well, let's look at PCL5. PCL5 is a tricky one because PCL5 has, let's see, 5 plus 35, right? Forty valence electrons, 40 electrons to play with, okay? If we try to draw a structure for this and follow the octet rule, you might say, okay, well, I'll just put phosphorus here and I'll put CLs around it. And now I've run out of bonds for phosphorus, right, because two, four, six, eight. Uh, and I'll just put, I don't know, I'll just put one over here. I'll just put it over here and I'll just fill in my octets. And you're like, this isn't so bad. I can do this. So here is my structure. Okay, so, so what's the big idea? This follows the octet rule. This follows the octet rule. What's the big deal? The problem, sir, is that we have not counted up the total electrons. So let's take a look at this. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, right? Well, the problem is we haven't used all our electrons. And we haven't used them. Well, we can't just have two electrons floating off into space. I mean, I guess if we drew it this way, we would draw two electrons just sort of sitting out here looking sad, right? And here's like, right, two set, right? Here's the little tear, right? It's sad. Those are two sad electrons. They're crying, right? Because they're just left unwanted. Well, you can't do that, okay? So it turns out with single bonds, we just aren't using enough electrons uh, to make this structure work. So what we do is we can't draw this structure this way. So what we do instead is we draw phosphorus in the middle, and we say phosphorus can violate the octet rule, 
and so we'll draw five bonds around it. I can no longer use my right angles, which is a little bit of a bummer because it makes it a little more awkward to count electrons, but at this point, you guys should be pretty good at this. So I've got a single bond, so I'll need six more electrons here. Single bond, so six more electrons here. And you'll see that the chlorines are following the octet rule. And they're following the octet rule because they don't have to break it, right? We only break it when we have to, not when we wish to, okay? So we end up with a structure like this. And if we count, since all of the chlorines have a full octet, then we can simply count 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, and this is 40 electrons. And this is great. So this works out wonderfully, okay? Uh, and so what we're going to say is that phosphorus uh, can violate the octet rule. And so it is allowed five bonds, right? So it ends up with five bonds. Right. Notice that we don't go beyond the five bonds. Just because it can uh, something below carbon can have up to 12 electrons doesn't mean it does. In this case, it only has five bonds. Okay. So it, uh, this is one of the ways of violating the octet rule. Another way is when you have something like, say, ICl3. Now, this one doesn't look like it has to follow, violate the octet rule at all. Well, let's just see what happens. ICl3 would be 7 plus 3 times 7 is 28 electrons. Okay. Well, in this case, if I put I in the middle and Cl's around the outside, again, you can just fill in octets, as we've done before, as one does. And we'll fill in the octets. And there we are. And again, you're like, Dude, don't need to violate the octet rule, except this turns out to be only 26 electrons. And again, we've got a problem. We're missing, right? We need two more electrons. Not two fewer, two more. So what do we do? Well, we've got single bonds everywhere. We have nothing else to do except put them on the iodine. And so what we do in this case is we simply tack on two lone pairs instead of one to the iodine. And then we just continue on as if nothing happened, right? Just look away, nothing to see here. <laughs> just iodine violating the octet rule as it does, right? And again, since iodine can violate the octet rule, I can, iodine can violate the octet rule. I can violate the octet rule. No, iodine can violate the octet rule Right? And so we end up with three bonds plus two unshared pairs. Again, it's only 10 electrons, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, right? Five groups of electrons around the iodine. But that works out great. And so we're going to see that this predi accurately predicts, helps us predict the shape of the iodine trichloride molecule. Okay. So when you have extra electrons that you haven't used, they would go on the atom that can violate the octet rule. Uh, or if you have a situation where you need to form more bonds, then, uh, right, uh, such as on PCL5, where you have a fifth chlorine that needs to go somewhere, uh, and so you can attach it to the central atom. Okay. So uh, that's how you deal with expanded octets. Well, electron deficient bonding is pretty much the same. It's just that you recognize that you don't have to always add extra bonds. And so you have something like AlCl3, right, or BCl3, right? So for aluminum trichloride or boron trichloride, actually aluminum, aluminum chloride should just be ionic. We wouldn't usually draw this as a molecular compound. But uh, boron trichloride is a molecular compound. And so if we were drawing this, uh, we would simply have boron and three chlorines around it. And ordinarily, you would get to this point, right? And you would just draw your extra dots, 
right? This is 26 electrons, and boron trichloride, by the way, has, uh, what is it, 3 plus 3 times 7, which is 24 electrons. And so that's two electrons too many, right? Two electrons too many. And most of the time you just say, okay, fine, two electrons too many, I'll add a bond. And that would work great. But in this particular case, because boron is to the left of carbon, usually we simply take the electrons off. If we can just simply remove these, right? And then we just draw this. And so for boron trichloride, it's perfectly okay to have fewer than eight electrons. I don't know why I drew that back, but here are my dots, CL, dot, 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 CL, dot, 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 all right? And so you can just draw something like this, okay? And so this is okay, okay, because B is to the left of C, right? In the alphabet and on the periodic table, boron is to the left of carbon. Um, so there it is, all right? So electron deficient uh, structures could be drawn with multiple bonds, but we just don't draw them because they're to the left of carbon, and so they just do what's called an electron deficient bond.